International Art, Linking Ancient Japan to Modern Year This first piece is by the acclaimed artist Tori Kiyonaga. His pieces encompass the technique of woodblock print, symbolic of the time. Woodblock printing enabled Japanese graphic artists to mass-produce art. This particular work, Two Women at the Back, served as one of the many art pieces distributed amongst the people by the new print technique. It is especially intriguing because of its balance. Sharp lines provide a stiff outline for the paper screen and the overall piece, while the women's flowing drapery creates a sense of fluidity and elegant movement. This art, named Japanese made by the French, inspired many artists, one of whom was Edgar Degas, who in his impressionistic painting, The Tub, mimics the Japanese art both in the bathing figure's position and the piece's flat, broad aesthetic. The two-dimensional style interested Degas, for he aimed to draw attention to the figure's surface. However, the Degas piece differs from two women at the tub in his modern use of pastels and foreshortening to provide a slight sense of perspective and to round out his main figure. This next piece by Kano Itoku is yet another work representative of its time. A six-panel screen commissioned by Toyotomi Hideyoshi was one of many bolt screens created during the Momoyama period, in which gold leafing served as a mystical yet powerful embellishment. It was meant to emphasize a prevalent militarism. An interesting feature is its sheer intimidation. Absolutely striking at 7 feet tall and nearly 15 feet long, the simplistic background puts all focus on the noble beast at center. Comparable is Henri Rousseau's Sleeping Gypsy, a post-impressionist work. Both employ a mythological, dreamy, pure background, intensifying the lion's strength. The creatures are painted flat and bold with a stark contrast from their environment. Especially intense are their eyes, which relate the lion's fierce and solemn stature. Only time created the differences between the pieces in which modernism rendered the gypsy lion's almost abstract image. Overall, a superb demonstration of how two different styles interpretations can display such underlying similarities. Suzuki Harunobu's Evening Bell at the Clock from Eight Views of the Parlor. This style was mastered by Harunobu and known as Nishiki, colored, mass-produced Japanese woodblock printed graphic art. Personally interesting is its leisurely but elegant perspective on a genre scene. Again, the straight, near geometrically accurate line provide a kind of frame to contain the beautiful movement conveyed in the effortlessly meandering lines which form the women's dresses. Functioning as a decorative work of art available to all people, this piece provided enthusiasts with a taste of richly colored, flat, traditional Japanese work, along with a newly innovated use of refined Nishiki design. A piece that clearly utilizes this Japanese style is Aubrey Beardsley's The Peacock Skirt, readily showing oriental influence from its flat wood print resembling figures to its Japanese design on the skirt itself. Aside from obvious similarities, the pieces both depicting two women convey an underlying delicateness that make them emanate a light, gentle aura to the viewer. With this next piece, Oron, or Grand Courtesan, we witness the revolutionary use of Japanese oil on canvas. Oil, a western technique, was among the multiple influences Luigi used. Immediately catching the eye is the courtesan's realism. No longer using the idealistic portrayal of Yukio-e printmakers, this piece conveys an analytical depiction of the subject. While showing more dimension, this still relatively flat work encompasses so much emotion that it creates a multifaceted essence relatable to the beholder. The East Meets West portrait could be juxtaposed with Matisse's Woman with the Hat to view the progress of portraiture. Both use the impact of color to depict emotion and invoke startling reactions. Darker tones in the Grand Courtesan contributes to the nostalgic element as well as causing a solemn, severe response to it. On the contrary, Matisse used color to create a playful look for his portrait, supposedly of his wife Anna. Though more abstract, it still encompasses the raw feel of the Japanese portrait. Lastly, is Katsushika Hokusai's famed The Great Wave of Kanagawa from 36 views of Mount Fuji. It functioned in Hokusai's experimentation with woodblock prints. The 
massive wave is absolutely striking and is filled with rush, movement, power, and even elegance. The men in trading boats depicted so minuscule only intensifies the perspective of the gargantuan mass. Personally, most interesting was the white caps of the waves, which seemed to mimic snowy Mount Fuji in the background, truly unifying the piece. Western techniques in the use of the European color Prussian blue was incorporated by Hokusai, making the work even more distinct. Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night, though seemingly an unlikely comparison, relates to the great wave through their similar execution and portrayal. Both Van Gogh and Hokusai attempt to depict nature not in its exact form, but in their own interpretation. The pieces show the constant motion and energy of nature. The sky Van Gogh created displays the ever-flowing movement that is similarly represented in Hokusai's breathtakingly majestic waves. While Hokusai displays the almost violent ocean in the foreground, the distant, simple view of Mount Fuji and the tranquility of the background suggest a hidden piece of grace to the waves. This grace is perhaps what both artists aim to convey in their artworks, a celebration of the beauty of nature in its entirety. While Van Gogh displays a more serene approach, there is something about the two-dimensional whim of the works that connects the two. This concludes our explanation of the connection between ancient Japan and modern European art. The mingling of cultures readily shows itself through the subtle, intertwining details of all the pieces, which hopefully you've been able to see.